Yeah, so uh, I suppose we can start. Welcome to the workshop. Um, my name is Thomas. Um, I'll be your host. I'm, I'm Christian. Um, I'm from Hamburg. We work both for the company Wir machen Bund. Um, today, mainly Thomas is talking. Uh, I try to help everyone if like, you need like, personal assistance, like just raise your arm and uh, I try to help. Um, has everyone has the material so far? Yeah. Uh, Who has not the material so far? <laughs> okay. Yeah, just, just copy it from the USB stick, which is password. Pa yeah. And it would be totally awesome if you could uh, introduce yourself, like uh, where, what's your name, where you're from, and what VVV uh, level you are. Like, are you a beginner, intermediate, or uh, <coughs> even a professional? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Hi. I'm Laurent from Bremen, <coughs> and I'm using VVV for quite a while, never been to know before, and I would say on an intermediate level, using also semi-professional. Yeah, hi. Hi, my name is Kia, and I'm from Germany, and I also use VVV for quite a while, never been to I'm 
Okay, um, first maybe a little overview what we're gonna do. Um, we'll take a short intro, a little bit of theory, <coughs> but really short on Box2D. Um, and the main part will be building a kind of boilerplate for you. Boilerplate meant like a clean, um, nice structure of Box2D nodes um, where you can um, learn upon or um, take, it, take it further. Um, you will learn the nodes, um, how, to, how to use them, how to render the whole thing correctly, um, how to get your mouse into the world, how to manipulate objects, um, like see the data coming out of the engine. Um, when we have time, we can try to build on top of this boilerplate a little game. It would be something like a little balance game where you have to balance all your objects you throw in and get a high score or something. But just when we, when we have enough time, also questions would be like, also the last 20 minutes maybe when we when we get there. Um, Box2D itself is um, an open source project uh, from Erin Kato. Um, it's you can find it under the, uh, the Box2D org. Um, it's uh, been used in, in very much or a lot of games uh, and other software, even Unity uses it to simulate 2D physics. Um, yeah, um, it's 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 a simulation, so it's it's trying to approximate the real world. It's it's not perfect. Um, but for stuff like games uh, or visualization or animations, um, it's, it's quite good. Um, you can simulate rigid bodies, this means um, like hard objects, not squishy, softy ones. Um, yes, move them, create them. Delete them also, you can connect these objects. Um, make a lot of stuff. Um, let's um, see. Yeah, the whole thing um, is brought to you by Vux. It's a VB user who wrapped the complete C library into some convenient nodes for use uh, in VVV. <coughs> um, I would like to show you, maybe you've uh, been in the folders already at the end. There's our renderer, and we will be able to 
create objects. We can grab them by the mouse. We can connect them or just delete them. The patch itself. I'm sorry, I have a bit problems with the mouse here. Will be kind of this whole thing with some sub patches. We won't patch everything from ground. We will try to patch as much as possible, but some things uh, we've got down here as modules. So you just grab them and throw them in maybe. Really depends um, on the time we've got left. But um, we will start from, from zero. Um, in the process, we will, we will cover all these nodes, we will cover the pins, um, we'll see what they do, what's important, what's not. Um, and I hope we get, get it to the final states, if time will allow. Um, if you have any questions in the process, um, please feel free to ask them. Um, Chris will be assisting you, if possible, if necessary. Sure. You have red notes. Okay. So I suppose. Box2D contribution is not there where it should be. Yeah, um, let me show you. You have got this little file here. Um, please unzip the pack and put it like in your VVV installation like under packs and box2d. So a good test would be um, if you open the note browser, like uh, with middle click and a patch or control N, and you type in box to D show, so these all notes should show up. Hier bin ich. Ja, kann ich dir mal bringen. Ja. 
Is there anyone where this is not showing up? Thank you. 
Okay, I think we will start anyway. <laughs> Just like two people who have to catch up. So I would like you to um, open VVV with a clean patch, nothing else. So, the core and the heart of the Box2D engine is, is the world itself. It's, it's a node that's called the world. There is, it's where all the calculations uh, are made, where all things come together. Um, and we need to get that first right. So, just type word. Box to D. Okay, so we will look at the notes um, as we use them. So um, let's take a look at Word. We've got here several pins. Um, some are important, some are less important. Um, on the outer left, um, we have the bounds. Um, 
in VVV um, that's implemented like this, um, that you have to define bounds of your simulation. Um, from um, minus 100 to 100, that's pretty much space. We leave it uh, like the default. We don't uh, need to, um, to change that. Just um, keep in mind um, that um, this would be problematic if you have something like we've seen uh, before the teaser with the nice car, um, that you can't go endless like to ride. So you have to tr do some tricks to set the whole world um, again to the left when you left the screen and so on. But for our purposes of the workshop, we can leave this pretty much standard. Um, we have also a gravity pin. Um, let's make it quite Earth-like. That's what everyone says is minus 9.8 should be the Earth gravity. Let's stick to this. And here is an interesting pin. It's called time step. Um, the whole simulation is calculated in time steps. Um, everything what's happening with the bodies, with collisions, everything that gets simulated has to be calculated. And in this engine, it's done step by step. Um, each of these steps has also iterations in position and velocity. You can change them performance-wise or there is a trade-off between performance and accuracy. But we will leave them as they are. But our time step should be quite a frame rate of our display or the VVV instance that is running. Um, so we have to calculate that first. We want to update it 60 times a second. So let's have a one. And divide it by 60. And that's our time step. You can also put a VVV main loop in there. Set it also to 60. So the update frequency of VVV and the engine is quite the same. It's a good practice. We have some more pins. Of course, we should enable the world. Um, Allow sleep is an option you can choose um, to save performance. Um, it's just about um, when, when a body is resting somewhere, it does not need to, to be updated or calculated when it doesn't move or does nothing. Um, that's an option to put it to sleep to save a bit of performance. Can be situations where you need to uncheck it. Um, like when you change the gravity, things like that. Um, but that depends really what you want to do. We will allow it for now. Maybe we will turn it on later. And last is the reset pin. We can just reset the complete world. Everything that gets calculated, everything that we created um, gets deleted and we have a fresh start completely. On the other hand, we have some outputs. There is the world as such. I will come to it later. We will need bodies and we will need joints. The last one is just a pin that flashes up when the world got the reset. We will use it also. Um, all the nodes of Box2D need some connection to the world. Um, sometimes it's the world pin that is needed. Sometimes we need the bodies. Sometimes we need the joints. 
that's all information provided from the world. Everything gets calculated and then you can ask the world, hey, are there objects? Where are they? Show me. Um, to avoid a little bit of mess in patching, because we need all those connections on almost every, every other Box2D node, um, it's a good practice to send them out and um, not connect them like this, but have a send node. It's important that you choose the node one because that's kind of general, general purpose sender node. And we have received nodes that are quite the receiver. It's like a wireless link in VVVV. Send node. So let's um, connect the first one. Let's um, name it world. And let's have two more sent nodes. Let's connect one to the bodies and name it. And also for joints. At some point we want to get also some info on the, on the joints which are really constraints between two bodies you can connect them or you need also joints um, to get the mouse grabbing an object and such stuff. And the last one we would like also to know um, when the world got reset it. So let's, let's send this out to and name it has resets. Um, I think that might be a um, good time to save the patch. Um, save it wherever you like. Maybe, maybe even in a, in a workshop folder. I think that might be a good idea. Because when we, when we get some um, some modules from um, that folder um, it will be better to find them. I will name mine file Box2D Workshop. Choose whatever you want. Reload now. You can Bigger. You can use uh, Windows Plus to, to use... Uh, Windows Plus. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's better. Okay, we, now we have pen a lot. Um, I'm not sure this is this is so good. Oh, how do I stop it? There is also zooming in VVV, apparently. I won't use that. It's, it's buggy. <laughs> yeah, I know, but... Uh, oh, yeah, it's pretty buggy. OK. 
Okay. Um, I think I, I have to leave it like that because we will have a renderer right here so we so we can see everything. I'm not sure this is good to pan around because we just just don't see what we are what we are doing. Um, okay, nevertheless, let's go on. Um, now that we have a world, we could probably start um, putting objects into it. Um, of course, we want to see them, so let's create a renderer first. So we have to we have something to watch at. It's a renderer ex9. So for this workshop, we will be using um, dx9, but it doesn't really matter. We could also do dx11. Uh, it's, it's the same. You just get the data, you render it, and doesn't really matter which, which technique you use or which DirectX version you use. Okay, so let's um, get to the next box to denote to make friends with. We have a lot of them, um, and we want create body persist. There are two of them. There is just create body, and there is another one, which is create body dot persist. So this is um, one of the more essential nodes. Um, you will need it a lot if you want to play with Box2D. It will just create objects named buddies, <coughs> um, which can you later retrieve from the world and, and render. Um, there are a lot of pins. Um, we need for everybody, we need a shape definition. We, have, we can have three kinds of shapes in Box2D, which would be a box, a circle, or a polygon. Polygon would be like a free shape um, consisting of as many points as you like. Um, the only important thing is that it's um, convex, that it doesn't have dents in it. But we will, we will look at this um, later. So let's begin with a very simple box. There is box, box 2D. That's a shape definition that we will attach to the body we will be, we will be creating. So to tell to communicate with the world, there is a world pin on this on this create body. So that's the first thing we could connect like so. But let's get a receive note. Let's choose our world and let's connect it. So that's basically what it takes to um, create um, a body in Box2D. Um, that would be the pin to create it, but um, let's look at, the, at some pins first. Um, it should be quite important to define how big it is. Let's just stick with the default values here. And it would be quite important to define where it should land. So we have a position P, 
pin on the create body. Um, you will notice um, there is also a position pin on the shape definition itself. Um, that has various reasons. Um, you can you can play with this position to offset the shape that is attached to a body somewhere else, or more important, you will need it um, if you define more than one shape. But um, in this example, we will we will don't change it. We will leave it like zero zero. So now we have a size, we have a position, uh, but we have quite some other pins here. So let's maybe walk through them. Yeah. Like this. Oh. It's better. Okay. Um, we have size, we have position, we can also define an angle, so like uh, um, the rotation of the body that we want to create. You can leave it at zero for now. And there are some physical pins. So the first one is the density, it's like defining um, the mass of an object, how, how much weight it has. Is it a feather, is it like a steel ball or something? Let's stick with the default value. There is a friction pin, um, that's like the friction between two bodies, like if, if you have um, rotated rotated ground and you put a box on it uh, that defines will it slide or will it stick or will it slide faster or, or better it's like if it's soap or it's um, how sticky it is I think that's a good good explanation for it <coughs> and there is um, restitution so this is quite the bounciness of an object when you when you drop it on the floor, will it, will it come back really high or will it just bounce just a little bit? Um, that's um, physical things you can define for every shape you put on a body. Um, there is also a sensor pin. It's kind of a special thing. When you turn it on, it means that this body will um, We'll see when it collides with other bodies, but it, it will just give you the data, but it will not really react. So um, it might be useful in some cases where you just want, want to know is something somewhere where it should be or not should be. I'm not sure I'm explaining this right, but um, know that it's there, you can have its data, but it will not interact with other objects. Um, there's also another special pin, it's called the group index. Um, that has also to do with coll collisions. Um, you can define up to 16 groups in Box2D. Um, that if you, if you give it a positive number, um, all objects in this group will collide with each other for sure. With, when you give it a negative number, they won't ever collide. That uh, might be useful for some games when you have uh, like players who should collide with the world but not with each other or tricky stuff like this where you, where you want everything in one world but some things don't should touch other things or not collide with them. So you can define it. You can define up to 16 groups and each of absolute um, collision or no collision at all. But that's kind of a special thing 
use it when you need it. Um, last one is also um, a custom pin. Um, we have also a custom pin down here at the create body. We will use that one <coughs> because we will just attach one shape to one body. Um, so we want just a custom name uh, to give to give the body the custom name, not the shape itself. It, for this example, it doesn't uh, make much sense. In other scenarios, you mm. might want to to use it just to search for individual shapes, even when they are more connected to one body, more than one connected to a body. Um, that should be it for a shape definition. We have it in three flavors, um, box, circles, and polygons, like I said. We will come to the, to the other ones later. Um, let's get another um, some other pins on the create body. Um, yeah, we have a uh, rotation pin here too. Uh, I'm sorry, I was bothering with, with the other. It's also rotation for the shape definition, and that's the rotation of the body itself. We will stick to the to this one, but we don't really need it for it for the example. So the next pins. Um, also quite useful, you can create objects um, that have instant velocity, so they are, you place them and they, they are moving, they, they are having um, a force inside that, that will push them. <coughs> um, you, have an, you can have an angular velocity, it's like rotation velocity, so you put an object and it will, it will spin uh, right away. Um, there is also damping parameters, both for position and rotation. So it's like more like a real world behavior. Um, if you let them at zero um, and have, for example, no gravity, you can spin an object and it will spin forever. Like this is, but. This is maybe not what you want. You want maybe to to get it slowly, that it gets slowly slower, <laughs> like it would behave in a normal world where when nothing spins forever, um, or the position. It's like the linear damping, um, where you want it when you, when you bounce it somewhere, you want it to stop some at some point like it would in a, in a real world um, too. You have a pin for a fixed rotation, so if you don't want your body that it ever rotates, just check it, it won't. Another interesting pin is, and you know, um, the object that you are creating will be moving at really fast speeds. You should check this um, this pin, um, so you get a better computation, a bit more precise computation in the engine, but it comes at a little cost of performance. Um, up to you. Sometimes you have to do it. Um, the thing is, like we said, the calculation is in steps. So when an object is really fast, and let's say we have a wall here, we have an object, and it moves really, really fast. So there can be a calculation step where the object is um, like here. And in the next step, it might be just behind the wall. And the engine doesn't, doesn't know. It's, it's, it didn't see it cross the wall, so it would fly like, like further. Um, when you hit the pin, we have a much more precise computation and the engine will, will know, okay, there was a wall in between, um, I won't let you fly further, you will bounce off, off the wall. So, but this is really for really fast moving objects. Um, 
We have another pin, it's a custom pin. They are quite important. Um, sometimes you want to name your buddies um, just to have a little bit of structure in your, in your simulation. So you know this, these are the walls, these are players, these are enemies or whatever you do. Um, it's a good idea to, um, to have a name for it so you can later retrieve it from the, from the engine. So you can, can search for a name and then the engine will tell you, oh yeah, I have like three objects that are named like this and whatever you want to do with it, um, you, can, you can search them or filter, filter the data um, based, based on this custom name. Last two pins, um, TTL is time to live. Um, you can set it to enabled and say like the default is one second. So when you create the object, it will live for one second and disappear. It's like an automatic, automatic thing that, that you can set that will happen. Um, but these are rather special. It really depends um, if you need it or or not. Um, I will zoom out again. Because um, that were, these are quite the two two important kinds of nodes for creating, for creating objects. Um, they have a pin out where body definitions or the body data, if you want, um, comes out. Um, we choose the persist one, so it will be always at the pin. We will always have the information about the body that was created and the next one and everything you can can create just one for fun and you see oh why doesn't oh I'm sorry we have good demonstration for time to live I let it click so it disappeared let's do it again now we have like five bodies created we already see there is something um, and we can maybe start to render. So how do we do it? Um, there is another node um, called get body details. So that's, um, that's the note to find out about all, all bodies that we simulate. <coughs> um, we can just connect our create body to the input pin of get body details. And now we have all that pins with all the information about all the bodies that that are coming out of the create body node. There's like position, rotation, velocity. We have all kinds of things. Um, we will look at them as we as we go further. But um, maybe we should get something in the renderer to, to see. So let's render it with, a, with the constant shader. It's constant EX9.
and we need another box to denote. Um, it's called get polygons. Connected to the shape output of the get body details. And of course, a shader wants to have a mesh. So let's get polygon x9 geometry 2D. the polygon node, um, we have the points of the polygons called vertices. We need these. And we also need the vertex count that it's also provided by the node. That's just like more rendering topics. So let's don't get deeper on this. We just know that we need that we need to create a mesh out of this data. Thomas, can you magnify again? Because this is like a tricky part. Okay, 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 okay. So. Okay, so we have a mesh. Let's connect it to the shader and let's connect the shader to the renderer. So let's see, we have some bodies here, but we don't see anything. Let's reset the world and let's create it. Oh, they are coming, but they are just falling down. It's okay, we don't have a floor. They are just going somewhere. But that was um, our first, so our first um, object, so to say. Um, what we see here, two things. These boxes are pretty big, and um, they don't look square. We said we want the size to be one and one, but. Um, our renderer is quite uh, at an aspect ratio of a, of a landscape. So everything, everything is getting squeezed out. Um, we can correct this with aspect ratio transform. Let's put it right under, under the renderer. And let's connect it to the width and the height of the back buffer. And in the next step, connect it back to the renderer at the aspect ratio transform pin. It's the one that's a bit hidden at the right side. So let's check again. Now these um, look like square.
Um, the next thing to fix is like they're quite of big. Um, we won't just make them smaller um, at the shape definition because um, the units um, or just the size of one is the it's pretty much the sweet spot for the engine for the calculation. One is like one meter in real life. And Box2D is able to run fine on everything like between uh, a small bottle and a big bus. It's like 0 0.1 meters or 10 meters. Anything between. And one meter is, is the sweet spot for the calculations. You should not get smaller than 0 0.1. And you not, should get bigger than 10. So, like, you want to, to have these healthy bodies. Um, with this size, they're coming pretty big at the screen. So the trick here is um, like to scale the renderer. Um, good point to do this is on the aspect ratio pin itself. Um, you might think, um, OK, if we want to zoom out like or, or scale the renderer down, um, we should go lower values but it's not like that we if we want to make it 10 times smaller you've just to put a 10 inside here so it says scale but um, the way it is it is uh, handled in the renderer you need um, to put like a 10 if you meant to make it smaller but that's okay. Let's check it. Okay, now we have smaller boxes. They look good, that looks square. And um, these are our first objects. Um, of course, they fall into, into endless negative. Um, let's make um, a floor for them. And maybe let's let them be the floor so we can put other objects on top of it. Um, if you want to um, have an object that stays where it was created, that doesn't move, that's not influenced by, by other objects, we have to put its density at zero. Uh, can everybody make sure that you're using the create body for this instead of the... Yeah, that's pretty important. We mean like this here. There are two kinds, and we need the second one. OK, um, we left um, on the topic of density. If you make the density in zero and create a body, it will just stay there and other bodies will bounce off of it uh, but the body itself that has density zero won't move and will just stick there um, that's a good kind of floor um, let's make the size at the x-axis bigger let's see yeah that looks good and maybe we should get it a little bit 
down like minus nine. Sorry. Oh, it was too much. I'm sorry, what's, what's going on? Okay, minus four might be it. It really depends how, how you scaled your renderer where this ends up. Minus four works for me, like with this aspect ratio. Um, the density, the density of the object must be zero, so it won't move. If you like, you can get um, a little bit friendlier color, like a nice gray. And so we can reset the world and we can create our floor. That's pretty much to it. I um, think the fun begins when we get some other objects inside. So let's do this. We want to render them separately, so let's get a group EX9. So we can just put more shaders at that layer. We hear a lot of clicking still. Um, you're not quite there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, at the world. The, when you right click. Yeah? Does it work? Everyone, everybody's still busy? Or are you browsing the web? <laughs> um, was, there, was there something you had um, problems with so far? Like maybe understanding or maybe something was too fast um, or not clear. Too fast. 
Too fast. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So you, you might um, might wonder how to um, get these pins uh, like fast. So it's a left click, middle click, and you can also do auto naming with another middle click. So you get uh, you get the names because I've, I've seen some patches where all the I/O boxes were put out, but no naming. So you get um, you don't see actually what you what you really changing okay so still a lot of clicking uh, i guess it's so just generating bodies okay <laughs> Want to proceed further to get a little bit more fun? Okay, looks good. Just let's, um, let's create some more buddies that we can um, make fall on our ground. Um, it's basically the same. So let's be lazy. Let's mark all that and copy paste it like so and of course let's connect it and we don't need that big colors and if you have the second uh, structure here, let's change some parameters. Um, let's change the position to zero, zero, and the size to one, one. We want these objects to have a density, to have a mass, to interact with the world, or in terms of of being able to, to move around. So let's get the density at one again. Let's leave the other parameters like they are. You can of course experiment with them, with the restitution for example. We can do this. <coughs> let's try it out. Okay, now we can 
on click create more bodies they will always appear at position zero zero like we like we told them can just change the restitution just just to show you the difference if we get a really low value and create some oh, I'm sorry we need of course um, our floor uh, Thomas can you uh, try to connect the ground to the reset of the world yeah sure uh, actually that was the plan so um, let's make it a little bit more convenient let's get the receive node value And we have just we are just sending one, so it automatically has reset. And let's connect it to the create pin of our ground. So every time we do a reset, we will get we will get this ground to be created every time. Yeah, we are resetting the world, so everything gets deleted and cleared, and it's actually in the same frame, it gets created again. And the parameters are like entity, no, you need to enable it. They are assigned to the new created object, but it can't, changing this parameter is not possible during the object. Also, we need to add the end of the world. Um, no. So you mean like density or. Changing gravity is no problem. Can let's let's try it. Let's 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 we have this nice bouncy thing, and we can we can change the gravity. I'm sure it's. No, the the real physical things you you can't change. Then there is a there is a uh, node. It's called update body. It lets you change some things like velocity, um, such things, but not the actual friction or restitution of an object. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's actually not not possible once once a body is created. Could of course trick around like delete it and create it again with the complete same values, but other physical values. Uh, that's of course possible. It's a little bit hacky, but that would be like a workaround. So I've set the gravity at minus nine again. It's like horizontal and yeah, we have here some magical horizontal gravity if you want. So you can use it for wind maybe or things like that. That's that's a bounciness. Okay, so the higher it is, the more bouncy it is. Yeah, yeah, it will bounce more. But um, when you think about it, you need um, you need it for both objects, for the floor and uh, because that's getting added up. So 
sometimes you have to fiddle a little bit to find the right values. It really depends sometimes on the mass, on, on what, what you're doing. Um, ah, you mean on the on the creation, like you mean this thing? Yeah. Uh, no, that's actually something else. Um, that because um, there is an object created, and right away there is another cre uh, object created in the same spot. The engine um, is seeing this, and it's automatically um, getting them. Um, yeah, like. That they don't overlap, yeah. It's it's like correcting, no? It's it's um, looking like uh, crazy, but um, yeah. Okay, maybe. Um, Um, you mean the time to live? Um, no, I've, um, I think in the in in first thing I let that, uh, this thing on, so my object disappeared immediately, but um, just, just turn it off, you don't need it right now. How do you mean something else? Okay, so now we have a floor, we have some objects um, that we can drop on it. Um, you probably want um, at some point maybe in your project to put a texture on it. Um, let's see if we can make this um, and let's see what problems um, arise. Um, just get the assets node. EX9 texture source. So you get some, some dummy textures. These are fetched from some places on your on your Windows installation. So there should be some texture at the output pin. Let's try it. Okay. Let's get it another texture, something. Okay. Now what we see, that if we put a texture on such an object, um, see what happens. Um, somehow it's, it keeps its orientation. It doesn't rotate with the body itself. Um, that's because how we handle the polygons or how we get how we handle the data or how we interpret it. Um, we now just get the points the body consists of or the shape consists of and the points themselves getting animated. Uh, but the texture and also the shader does not know anything about it and keeps projecting that te the, the texture like like there would be no rotation. Um, we of course don't want to have something like this. We want our textures like to rotate with the objects together. Um, we need to use some other pins from get body details and we need to make a small change to the get polygons node. Um, we didn't make it here on the ground because it's a pretty simple object. There is no texture. Um, so we can leave it like this. But for our boxes, we would like to, to have a rotation and everything. Um, we can fix it by getting a transform 2D vector.
so we don't use um, really the changing points from get polygons, but we get um, the information from here. Um, now there is a pin that uh, it's called local coordinates. Um, if it's not turned on, we get really the data in global coordinates where this or that point is, and that's how our animation or or our boxes um, look like and, and behave. Um, we can also say we want just the local coordinates, so we just want to know how this shape is defined. In this case, it would be like four points, like a square, and that's then the only information we get here. We don't get a rotation, we don't get the position. If we switch to local coordinates, you see everything is getting, is getting in, the, in the middle because now the shader just knows there are some, some boxes and these are the points, here you go. Um, now to give them really their position, let's get to the position pin of get body details and connect it to translate X and Y. Zoom in. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's the position pin of our objects, and these are the rotations. Um, see, like we have like 88 values here, but only 44 here. That's uh, because we get like a vector, like a x and y coordinate. So we need twice twice as much slices. Don't be bothered. Um, don't be worried. It's okay. Because on this pin, actually, we also want two coordinates, or x and y um, in that matter. We also want the second pin, the rotation. And we can connect it to the rotate pin on the transform. Like these two guys, these. We don't need the scaling actually because we get the scaling from the polygon or from the vertices. They are really, um, they are spaced like they should. So the size is okay. We just need the translation and the rotation. So let's zoom out again and let's connect the transform to the transform pin of the shader and now we see our boxes are like they were before but now the textures everything we put on it it just rotating also that's just why why we need uh, to do it this way Is this somehow clear or is there a question to, to this because that, that might be, I don't know, maybe a little not too obvious what's, what's happening here and what's the difference be between these local coordinates and global coordinates. If we switch to local coordinates, we just get the shape and the size of it, but not the position and not the rotation, because we don't animate these points anymore.
<coughs> okay. Um, so we, we are at a point um, that we have a floor. We can place objects inside our world. Um, but they are always at position zero, zero. Um, now, wouldn't it be nice if we could just point uh, with the mouse where we want them to appear? Um, we can do this, of course, um, but first we have to get our mouse coordinates like into the world. Or at least um, have them in, in, in scaling and, and units that are that, that match our world because you know we scaled uh, the renderer it's everything is like zoomed out a little bit and we have to treat the mouse um, a little bit special but um, it's not that complicated or bad so let's just do it hope you are ready for the mouse thing so let's get a mouse devices window let's zoom you in There are two of them, desktop and window. We want the window one because we want the mouse to uh, to react just at the renderer window. That's that's what it um, says. That's what it means. <coughs> Next thing is um, Let's see the normal, normal mouse node will give us always coordinates in the range between minus one and one. That's also the normalized space of a, of a renderer. Um, so when I, when I click in the upper left corner, coordinates would be minus one and one. They, they are not getting bigger. They will be always like this. Um, but since we are correcting our renderer already with first aspect ratio and second with the scaling, um, our objects are quite, let us, let's see, they have quite other coordinates. So it's like minus three and um, that's because because we um, made the aspect ratio correction. Um, now, when we get the mouse um, at the renderer, we we wouldn't get the right coordinates. So we have to um, have to compute all the stuff that we already did, like aspect ratio and the scaling. We have to compute with the mouse coordinates. Um, Let's let's um, build it. Um, maybe we can um, explain it better when it's there. Um, we need an apply transform um, vector. So. This node basically takes uh, numbers and they can be transformed, um, for example, with a transform node or everything that gives us a, a matrix transformation, like the aspect ratio, for example, um, which is a good thing uh, because it's already there. It already matches um, the renderer or it makes the renderer um, render render um, nice nice squares and nothing is squeezed and everything. So that's just 
connect the transform. And on the other hand, we need our mouse coordinates. Um, it wants uh, us to have like 3D coordinates. Um, our mouse will give us 2D coordinates. We need a special little one node that that's named X, Y, and the big Z. Just a um, little convenience node where you just get your 2D coordinates on the one side and can add a third component like the, like the Z axis, but we leave it at, at, at zero. We just want to compute our 2D coordinates, so we just need that one to, to correctly connect to the transform. Let's see what we get here. So we get a complete transformation of our of our mouse coordinates. You see, they are like zero point something, and after the transformation, they are like eight point. You see, it's actually ten times more at the x axis, um, and. These are the right coordinates now that will fit into our world. So, so let's get them back into a like a mouse style format. I'm not sure how to call it, but um, it's a node called mouse states join. See, it's basically the, the same thing like the mouse node, but all the pins are up here like inputs. So you can um, like correct your coordinates and get them back in here. We can't do that right now we, because we have three coordinates like the Z. So we need... Um, Another little convenience um, note that's called um, XY. So this one is taking like three values and splitting them up in X and Y and the third Z that we won't use. We just need the X and Y values to have a position. See, these both nodes are like just, just to get this going with apply transform. Apply transform apparently is um, meant for 3D transformations, but um, it does a good job here. So we have our coordinates that are corrected we feed them in mouse states and let's get all the mouse buttons also so it's like straight connecting we don't need to do anything with them so we can connect them straight like this and at the end we get our box 2d compatible mouse let's say it's scaled, it's corrected by aspect ratio. And what's missing is sending it out so we can receive it on in other places. Let's get the send node node again. And let's name it mouse.
Um, we might, we might uh, want to change um, the fitting at, at the aspect ratio to fit the height. Um, that means that, that the height will be perce perceived and everything that's horizontal will get stretched or squeezed um, depending on, on the size of the renderer of or the aspect ratio of the renderer. Um, let me zoom out again. Let's put our floor <laughs> more down and maybe make it a bit bigger. That looks better. Um, is this whole uh, mouse thing, are there questions? Because that also might be not... Um, 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 not really reasonable or, or not, uh, I don't know. Can it be used with other input devices? Sure. You can, of course, um, get a touch note attached here or whatever your favorite uh, input device might be that, of course, should make some sense uh, for, for using um, with Box2D or, or with a renderer of VVV at all. But, um, yeah. Like a sensor and stuff like that. Like a sensor and like that. Yeah, would be possible, sure. Then you have, we have just provide, provide the coordinates, mm -hmm. like, like here. Um, yeah. Okay, let's now we sending out a mouse. Um, so let's actually um, display it on the renderer. Um, we could uh, make a mouse like ourselves, but that's not really fun job to do. So let's get into workshop and workshop modules and let's get the patch helper box to d there are two things in it it's like a cursor and also something to draw joints what we will need later so don't don't double click it just get it and put it in your patch like drag and drop It's like, it's landed like here. And when you open it, it should be something like this, or it should be exactly like this. Um, let's make another group node EX9, just under our, our, uh, our un other group, so we can connect our helpers to be displayed in the renderer. Let's see. Now you should have a, something like a cross and it should react to your mouse and it... should get you on the, on the whole renderer space. Two, two. No, just just to keep it down here because um, over here we want to build some other some other things also that don't fit. You could you could of course connect it like like here or something, but and um, 
other reason is uh, to keep the mouse always above everything else. So because it's it's the last thing in the layer, so it's get always drawn above all other elements. Everyone have a mouse course or no?
Okay, should we proceed further? Yes, yes. Um, Oh, we can um, change this. Uh, send uh, X and Y and the left mouse button via vector 3D. That's a value. Yeah. Okay, it seems um, there are some machines uh, who got problems um, with this mouse state node. It's not the machines. It's or VV. Or VVVV. Oh, VV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have some VVVVs. Um, okay, I mean, the, like getting everything into a mouse state and sending it as, as one object is quite convenient, but um, we can, of course, um, there are many ways to do such things, or like sending, sending these values is not a problem at all. Um, so for these people where this is not working, um, please, um, get a zip node, zip value, um, open the inspector with control I. So we need two values for the coordinates and three values for the buttons. So let's make it five inputs. Um, actually, maybe a cons would be better. Let's get a cons spread. I'm sorry. Who actually has the problem with the mouse thing? No one, just one. Forget it. It's just one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was <laughs> 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 this by fixed yeah, or? <laughs> okay, but but he still needs the mouse, so yeah. maybe I help him to to send it like the the other way around. Okay. So last step um, with this mouse thing. Um, it would be nice, like, we get somewhere, we make a click or a double click and um, objects appear. So that's um, quite an easy task, like getting a receive node again and just choose our mouse. So, receive node, um, get the mouse. We need a mouse states, this time split. So we get all the, all the data that is flowing through that one wire. Or, ah, maybe better in the, in the workshop, uh, example that is already ready. We, um, I think I've used uh, mouse mouse match. Mouse match is a little bit cooler because it can detect double click, and that's a nice feature to place an object. So we have a mouse match mouse there is only one node of this let's connect it and get just the most right pin and set it to two like click count
at the output we have two pins. It's one is name detected. The second is the position. Oh, see, it's. Give me a second. Should actually work, but it does not. Oh, okay, forget it. Let's let's use the mouse states. Somehow this is buggy. No, apparently it it won't work. I'm I'm not sure why it should. Because this note works, this does not. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, let's forget the mouse match. And let's stick to the mouse states. So it was mouse states, mouse split. So, let's get the position xy from the mouse states that's connected to position xy from our create body and let's do for now let's let's do the um, creation with a click so we will need a talk edge So we just get one bang when we when we push the mouse. Without the talk edge, it would look something like like this, which can be fun, of course. Um, even if if you, if you try just just one, it it will always get pretty much more. So left button to input tog edge and up edge pin to create and now a left click will spawn a new object right um, at the coordinates of the mouse Sorry? What do you mean? Yeah, but it's just... You mean this one? Yeah, yeah, we need this also. Because we, um, we are calculating um, the coordinates and uh, like it should be one object again, so we use mouse states to join all this data, like the coordinates at the mouse buttons, to send it over like one wire. And um, here we are receiving it again, and in this case we need to split it up, so we get we get the data out of it. Um, Okay, we might want to um, to get another shape in a game, like a circle. What do you think? <laughs> it's it's awesome. more shapes. <laughs> <laughs> more more shapes. Uh, actually, it's it will be just um, replacing this little guy here from box to circle so easy task let's 
mark everything like we did before, copy and paste. I did not copy the mouse, so it would be a, we don't need this. If you have copied, of course, um, connect it to a layer and you just change the shape definition from box to circle. It's, it's called circle box 2D. So, when we change it, um, there is a little difference between box and the circle. The box wants a size and the circle just wants a radius. So, now we've, we've done that. Um, there is one more thing to do. Actually, quite few things. I was, um, this was not so easy at all. Um, to get some circle shaped bodies out of the engine, we need uh, another node. It's called get circles like obvious what it does does the same like get polygons but with circles so let's change it and um, now we just get a position and the radius of the circle um, we can't use the polygon node anymore because it, it wants some vertices. We, we can't provide vertices for, for circles, so let's delete it. Um, but we can uh, get a, uh, use a VVV shape that is already there. It's called segment. It's pretty much a circle. In terms of a mesh, it's like uh, it's called segment EX9 geometry. Let's connect it to the mesh input of the shader. We, have, um, we get already the position and rotation is already connected from our from our last uh, shape. We just need the size. Um, as we get just the radius here, we we need to multiply with with two to get the diameter. Uh, di diameter. diameter. Yes, I have crazy word. Um, <laughs> yes, and the diameter is like two times the radius. So let's connect it to the size. I will zoom out um, again so we can try this. Let's see, we can create some circuits. And of course, um, do the same like like with the other shape to connect the mouse and do create or maybe with better of a talk edge and disconnect these.
Okay. 14.30 How much time do we have left? Bis 17.30 Okay. <clears throat> So, um, there is one more shape to show you, it's, um, it's the polygons, um, we should get that pretty fast too, because you know it already, copy paste, so get the box shape, control C, control V, Let's copy paste this. Um, you can click on the group node, um, open the inspector with control E, and maybe mo put some more inputs or create some more inputs like five now. So we can connect our next shape. <clears throat> Actually, that's um, the shape where we just need to change just the shape definition. Um, you will see everything else is the same like um, with the box shapes. In fact, the shape definition of a box, like here, is just a convenience node. Um, internally in, a, in, a, in the engine that everything is a polygon besides the circles so they are effectively just, just two shapes polygons or circles so um, that's now it's, it's like changing only the shape definition so let's do it um, It's called Polygon Box 2D. Um, and this node wants vertices and the number of vertices we provide. Everything else stays really the same. So um, you could get uh, just a list of points inside here and count them and tell it like, oh, I have a shape, like a star uh, or, or something. Yeah, maybe star is not a good um, example, but something else, and it has like five vertices. You could call it, tell it like with numbers, or um, we can use a special kind of I.O. box where you can define your polygons. Um, we have a little patch for that under workshop and workshop modules just drag it in like the helpers before and you might also want to just copy it out sorry So these kind of I.O. boxes, um, you can click them, click the points with the right click and make changes. At the end, um, it's just two outputs that we push together. Um, we also can scale it up, scale it down like we want because this I.O. box is configured 
from minus one to one. So these all shapes you create here or change will be like this size. To make it bigger, you can simply multiply it and, and scale it up. Um, so these are the points. You can actually directly connect them to our polygon. And um, we also need the vertex count. So we count the points. We know, so a vertex is a set of two points. It's like coordinates. Um, it, it consists of two points, but it's one thing. So we know the count of 10 has to be divided by two because we have five points. One, two, three, four, and five. So that's how we calculate um, the vertex count. And now we can have quite, quite nice polygons. We can shape them like we want, whatever shape it is, as long Let's get this thing here running again. As long they don't look like these or these. Uh, problem with this shape is that um, the order is not right. Box2D wants them in an order that is counterclockwise. That has something to do with um, really with polygons drawing um, stuff like that um, not sure we, we want to, to cover this like in, in, in detail you can of course read it up um, important is just that the first vertex is like if you imagine this was a clock that when the first vertex is here, the second must be here, and they have to go all the way counterclockwise. Not sure how to describe it better. Um, so that's like a negative example. Don't do it like this. And also shapes with a dent, like this, where it gets hollow inside or it's, yeah it's like like a dent um, these are not supported either um, yeah of course sure maybe we have time to um, get to these um, compound shapes but of course yeah <coughs> so we have also two Two links here, just click them, look at it. Um, if you're not sure what concave convex means or what clockwise order in, in terms of drawing polygons means. Okay, um, that's what we have. Let's test it. Does it work? It does not work. Why? Does it work for you? Something coming out of uh, great body? Yeah. yeah. Polygons? That looks good to me. Uh, Let's see. No. Mm. Oh, the position is like. I don't know. I'm sorry. So, okay. Looks better. So now we can also have some, some kind of free form shape that you can define yourself either in an IO box or really by numbers. Um, doesn't matter, it's, um, but it's quite uh, important that you stick with the two rules of counterclockwise and no dents. If you have shapes like 
that actually look at it if you have shape like like this you want um, there would be a way um, just uh, by combining two different polygons into one or in, in this case um, it would be two shapes attached to one body and they effectively behave like like one like one object and kind of uh, like these dents <coughs> Um, yeah, so we can um, actually uh, grab some of them, of them objects. Um, I'm not sure, for me the mouse match with the double click is not working and I think it's too much hassle to, to, to um, patch like some double click uh, behavior right now. So um, let's stick to these uh, manual. All the position got somehow. Oh yeah, because there was the mouse on it. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but we can do our shapes like um, with the create banks. Um, but to actually be able to grab them, um, let's throw this just in. It's the, um, again, in workshop modules, it's called mouse joint. Let's drag and drop it into the patch. See, we have a one red receive node uh, because there is more to it. Also, the second, um, patch we have here, mouse raycast, drop it into, so that's the two patches um, that we dropped in, um, uh, let's have fun first. Um, we can grab an object, um, seems uh, to work, but there is no visualization kind of, of, of the rope. Um, so there would be a third module, it's called Helper 2. Let's drag and drop it in a patch. Also, and let's connect it to the group again. Let's um, control I and make one more layer pin available and well, let's connect the second. Well, so this is bigger. I think hardly anyone is grabbing and can grab their thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's go through it again. Like okay, 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 okay. That's, um, we just want um, to put like um, three, three little patches into our patch. Um, so we don't, don't need to, uh, um, to patch them by hand because they are already, already there. And we are running a bit out of time, so let's just throw them in. And that would be Helper 2. I know it's not uh, good naming, but um, that's how it's named. So Helper 2, just drop it in your patch and connect it to a group. Best would be um, right side by side of the other helper. Maybe it makes sense from the structure. And two other things. Both begin with mouse. Mouse raycast and mouse joint. So just drag and drop them in your patch. 
sometimes they are not dropped correctly in VVV. So should have these two patches right now also open. Um, and we now click um, an object, we can just grab it and have it like on a, some kind of rubber band. Um, maybe we should look at the patch that actually um, tells us what we have clicked because that's quite important um, to know or to find out. Um, we are using um, two nodes for this from the box to the pack. It's get body details that we already know, but there is another one. It's uh, named Raycast. Um, imagine a Raycast like a line you can you can draw on your on your renderer, and everything it crosses um, is detected or or shown here at the at the output pin. So you can you can just yeah find find out what's on a line. Or in that case, um, it has two pins: its origin and destination. If we make them both the same value, it's just like a point that you set somewhere and and probe. If you hit a, a something um, an object then Raycast will tell you which body ID you have hit. Oops. Um, it's like connected with the mouse, like we've um, done before, like mouse, then split the mouse state into its, its data. <coughs> um, get the points or the point uh, where you're pointing to, the coordinates. And on each click, we do a query where we find out uh, which body ID we have, uh, we have been probing right now. Um, now to know um, which body it, it is. There, there is a, let me, let me try to explain this. There is a little um, difference between a body ID and the actual slice ID or slice index um, from VVVV. Um, we can have a look at this when you go into the workshop modules and um, open get body details. Just double click it. So, really depends on how much object you have on scene. Um, when I reset my world, and um, there are some I.O. boxes um, connected to various pins here. Um, the more important ones, but there are also the standard things like position, rotation. We've been uh, dealing with that already. Um, let me just put some more objects on the scene. As I do so, you see the list is filling up. And there is a circle and whatnot. Really depends on what you have on scene. And um, we didn't um, give them custom names, so it's um, empty um, in this box, but we see a couple of other things. Um, like every of these objects got its own ID. At the time of creating, the numbers are like iterative, so you make the first box, it gets ID 1, you make the second box, 
gets ID 2 and so on. Um, Besides this, that the counting starts with 1 and not 0 like in VVV, it's also reversed. And if you delete, um, if you delete um, one of these objects, um, it will just um, will be deleted from this list, and then you might have a list like with IDs one, two, and then four, five. Maybe you deleted body six, then it will go with seven, eight, and so on. So there is no no possibility to get it to get the right bodies with a get slice because you don't really know um, so um, you have to search for it you you have to you have to say okay my rake has told me my rake has told me I have clicked body ID 8 um, so we will search for this body ID and see at which slice ID it actually is in VVV terms. It's quite not so intuitive, but um, on the other hand, um, no way to, I think, no way to do it otherwise because um, these names uh, or IDs are given uniquely and iterative and when you just delete one of them, so the, the, there is no real list, and um, so main thing is body IDs are not the same as slice IDs. Um, that's why when the rakers tells us it's a certain body ID, we get searching for it. Um, we have uh, on get body details we have get that pin with body IDs that's the list like we've seen here and we are sifting like sift is, is like searching um, let me click on something see there is an 8 make this actually a bit bigger So when I click on a circle, Raycast, Raycast tells me it's body ID free, but in this list that's coming out of get body details, it's actually at slice ID six. Does that make sense somehow? <laughs> yeah, I know it makes sense to you. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> um, please ask, because I'm uh, not, not sure I'm, I'm really explaining this so well. OK, at least um, no protesting. So that's how you find out what body you clicked. Also, with other rakers, if you want to use the rakers B, you will be in that, in that exactly same situation where you have to find out body ID versus um, the slice index of the list which is provided uh, by the nodes. Um, not sure if we want... Um, to go through um, this mouse joint construction. Um, it maybe looks a little bit um, complicated, but it's, it's not, it's not at all. Um, The thing is, um, joints um, need to. There are there are many um, joints in Box2D. This is one of them. It's most of the joints. They need uh, to know 
where is the body it has to go, um, are there coordinates where it has to be put on. Um, there is often other parameters like um, like limits, like a frequency when it's kind of a rubber thing, like like a mouse joint. You can um, you can change the behavior if it's stiffer or not so stiff. Um, but the whole thing about the the mouse joint that it looks like it looks like it is. Um, would be first you create the joint, you get the position, and you get one bang from your left mouse, so you create it, and we give it a custom name. So when you click it, the mouse is created. As long as you hold the left button, you will apply moving the mouse joint, to exactly that position that the mouse is is up to. When the left button gets released, there is a, a down edge that just destroys this joint. We can find out because we named it. So we have here our our joints uh, list or joints data, joints objects, whatever you might want to call it. Um, we search for it, like again with a sift. We know it's called mouse joint. It gets selected and it gets provided to, to the move node and also to the destroy node. That's basically how it works. Um, not sure there is more to tell about it. Yes. Frequency is like the stiffness of this thing, or um, maybe not the stiffness, but the bounciness, bounciness wobbliness. Like um, you might try to change that value and see how how it behaves. Um, now it's uh, we have just like twenty minutes left. Um, we could look at one or two more things, or maybe you have some more special questions. Maybe regarding the things that we've already done, or maybe some something uh, top of, yeah, I don't know. Sure, I have. Body. Ah, okay. Can so make the a bit yeah, okay. sure, you can do this. Mm -hmm. There is, there is also an. Um, um, there is a way um, just to move or or set a new position to a body. Um, there is a special node for this called um, update buddy. Okay, mm. let's maybe um, let's do it like with our ground, like you like you said. So let's have an update buddy box two D physics.
um, we need um, received node again to provide our bodies or oh, I'm sorry we are we want to update our ground body so we connect like the output like directly to the update body uh, node um, you can do much uh, much of changes like position whatever there is also position pin when we hit that see you can um, you can make your your floor move where you want um, That's not enough. Oh, okay. Um. So something like this is would be possible. It's not the best way to do it um, because, yeah, sometimes um, you see you can you can miss this. Um, I have to do like X, 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 like the yeah. Sure. I'm not sure this is actually better. Yeah. Um. That's really because uh, update body is, is really forcing just another a new position. There is no like um, like going there linearly. It's just old position, new position. So there might be things that that go wrong that um, go missing. Um, you should do it better. Would be with forces. Yeah, but it's it's still a new position. It's not in interpolated. But yeah, the it's the time it's messing with the, the, with the physics engine because uh, it doesn't know uh, where it's actually going. So it might fuck up and move it. The proper way would be this would be much more complicated. It's like uh, creating constraints or joints for the ground. Like when we join uh, on, on strings, basically. Yeah, something like this. Want to see what? Um, we actually have. Um, 
um, um, um, um, something you can you can do. There, there are ways, but I, I'm not really sure what what you're up to. So, but uh, if you if you have some something special in mind, we can uh, also talk. With your like with your hands also, you can track the hand and make the coordinates of your hands, make it uh, inside the mouse joint, and you have the same effect. Quite. Mm -hmm. I really have studied on this mouse Yeah, I, I just was a bit confused because of this ID thing. So I was You, you don't need to find them out if you if you know them you can you can also search by the name so you, you probably but, you don't but it really depends also of course when, when you're creating this scene you don't need this kind of ID business you just no. connect create body to create joint that's it sure um, maybe we could um, talk for a moment about compound joints um, compound shapes like sticking more shapes to one body. Um, we have also a little example. It's called compound shape. Let's drag it inside and let's connect it to a layer. So this is quite a sub patch with both things, the creation and the drawing. And there is a big difference between this and what we've done earlier. Um, we had to always like create body and the data was, was available um, at the output and you can pros process this further and everything. Um, now with a <coughs> compound shape, we don't want to use this persist create body. Um, we want um, to take the normal one because it flashes, like it really flashes for one, for one frame after creation. It gives us the data at the output pin and then there is nothing more. It's just for one frame. And you might wonder, what is it good for? Why it's not permanent? Because maybe you want to use it a few times. Um, logic behind this is this, that you provide in the same frame, you want to create a body and maybe attach more shapes to it. Or create a body and attach it um, to a joint or or combine two bodies with, with a joint or something. So you need um, this body object uh, that's at the output. You, you just need it one time and um, just for that frame. And what is basically happening here it begins like quite a normal create body and shape definition thing. 
Um, I made this shape like a dummy here. It's really small. It has really, oh, it has some mass, but it's really small, so it doesn't really matter. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm doing like a, this dummy here because without a shape definition, you can't even create a, create a body. So something must be connected, but this doesn't really matter. And also it's um, marked a sensor, so it, it won't collide with anything. Um, the tricky part begins down here with create shape, which is connected to the world, of course. We'll get the body where it should connect some shapes to. Um, you need to define those shapes. Like in this example, there is a, some, some long box and there are two rotations to it. So spreading in V4, uh, um, you get two objects or two shapes. You have to count them, you have to tell it, yes, these are two shapes, and then you can create it. What this means is that you create something like this. These are two long boxes. The one is rotated and both stick to the same body. So you can have like these um, concave shapes with it. Um, the box doesn't need to be a box. It um, could be a polygon, could be whatever, a circle, whatever you want. You could also have more than one create shape connected to a create body. So to give it, so make it consist of a circle and a box and some polygons. So you're pretty free to make the wildest shapes out of it. Problem with um, with the body object being here just for one frame is that we can't use it to draw. Um, in the other examples, we, we had this create uh, body. There was the object. We connected it right away to get body details. We got the data, and uh, we were able to to draw it. Here it's not possible, it's always nil besides the one frame you create. So the trick is um, to work with custom names. Um, I've named it compound shape. And on the other hand, I can look it up. So here are all the bodies from the world. We use get body, body details again. But just to search through all the names, if we find our compound shape, if we find it, um, it tells us which slice it is. The same thing, body IDs and slices. And now we can get the right body and get the details, get all the data to be able to draw it correctly. So it's. It's a different um, way of visualizing things or to create things. Um, like on the structures we, we created before. So that's that's a difference, but that's quite powerful. So you can be really free about your shapes, whatever you want. What the what what? Texture coordinates. Yeah, sure. Um, is it so sure? Oh, there's a, a um, the that starts from the left. Even if you can start from the left. You might you might mean indices, yeah. not texture coordinates. Two different things actually. Uh, 
we did the, the, I don't know, we make um, in a 3D model, yeah, like an Andra. So if you have a, um, not regular shape, you have to do, this is the first point, so if you have the right orientation. Oh, okay, yeah, that would be like texture coordinates. Um, there was another polygon node. Let me look it up. Oh, it's not, it's not there anymore. But I suppose you can do it easily uh, with DX11. Um, or, or the shader directly. Um, I, I've already, um, yeah. Yeah, but this, um, in, in DX11, you can um, construct these meshes like, like from vertices give your own uh, texture coordinates. Yeah, this would work, of, of course, I think so. Um, yeah. Not sure if there are any more questions. I think it was, was a little bit too much for too short of a time. Um, Sorry for that, but you get um, all the files, all the examples. Um, they should be really friendly to ex uh, to to um, yeah to learn from or to understand. I hope so, at least. Um, yeah, um, you get these goodies from all. From the last two notes, with some examples, with some fun patches, um, yeah, like this car at uh, the beginning, um, where you also can, of course, learn from. Mm, not sure. I would like, would love to answer more questions if you have some. Mm, do you mean? Um, do you use a, do you use a recast and identify one body? Yeah, and make something with that body. And change the color or just do it in a normal way. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, where do we have our recaster? Maybe let's do it with the boxes. Yeah. But yeah, pretty. That should be pretty easy. <coughs> um, we need to know how many boxes there are. So, time to live, or any other of these pins. Maybe body ID is, is better. So let's um, select number and let's get our rakest bodies. Please like two times okay I'm not sure yeah it's strange maybe it's somewhere um, okay let me see if this will this work this apparently does not yeah okay that's not quite But, oh, yeah, um, 
we should get all our bodies because we have uh, we have not we have just um, bodies that we created with this create body, but we rake as the complete world, so this does not match up. So let's get all. Nah, that won't work either. But now we should. No, we should not. <laughs> no, the problem is um, that these 45 bod bodies are just a subset. And the Raycaster is. Um, probably we could. I'm sorry. We could. Uh, when we connect the Raycaster directly. to these body IDs. Yes, now it's working because we are searching just in the in the subset that was created by this create node. Um, so yeah. I, I'm not sure where this is coming from. Now it's just one. Uh, maybe control F and search for it when we find two. Um, so of course um, time is over. We make a short break and then we make the next three hours. We did not <laughs> make a break. <laughs> we didn't even make a break. I totally forgot. Sorry for not having a break. <laughs> Sorry for um, three hours of. Oh, okay. <laughs> I